Welcome to the 2020 Storage Developer Conference. My talk is on enabling Ethernet drives. I'm Mark Carlson with Kioxia. I co-chair the Object Drive Technical Work Group along with the SNEA Technical Council. <clears throat> and I want to talk today about Ethernet drives. The direct attached storage in the original uh, sense was a, a drive that plugs into a host, uh, perhaps use SCSI, um, <clears throat> and then along came uh, storage area networks where multiple hosts can share the storage. This avoided those silos of storage and enabled storage <clears throat> efficiencies Examples include Fiber Channel and today iSCSI storage networks. Um, these have a controller in front of the actual drives. So they're handling all the networking in a controller. The hyperscale folks went backwards to direct attached storage again on commodity systems, but then they created special software, software defined storage that manages those hyperscale nodes in a solution. And now the industry is moving to NVMe over fabrics, uh, systems and devices on native ethernet as a storage network. Uh, ethernet was initially just a transport. Uh, endpoints performed all the storage services such as iSCSI. Um, the use of ethernet did mature, however, uh, with specialized protocols. There's key value protocols to access data in the mainframe context. There's object protocols to access massive amounts of unstructured data. And now we have NVMe over Ethernet, where storage is in a queuing paradigm. This enables high performance, low latency, few or no processing blockages to the traffic no longer gated by a transaction paradigm, uh, in other words, waiting for an acknowledgement. The next step, the next logical step, is to have NVMe over Ethernet to the actual drive itself. And this removes that storage controller that was necessary in front of the drive and uh, that processing bottleneck that existed. So NVMe over fabrics, there's several talks this week on this topic. <clears throat> it enables the sharing of NVMe-based storage across the network. So you, you have better utilization, you have capacity, you have rack space, you have power, better scalability, management, and fault isolation. Now the NVMe OF standard is NVMe.org. There's 50 plus contributors. Uh, version one was released in 2016. The fabrics that it supports include Ethernet, InfiniBand, Fiber Channel, and now TCP IP as well. The products are starting to reach the market from most major storage system vendors, so look for them. So when you look at those products that are coming out that support NVMe OF, most of them have a controller of some sort. That controller terminates the NVMe OF connections and uses PCIe based SSDs internally or on the back end. And those SSDs are behind an array or a controller of some sort. But there are performance limits to this. The SSD performance is increasing faster than the CPU NVMe over Ethernet to drive use cases. Uh, the NIC itself can become a bottleneck, and then this whole idea of storing and forward uh, increases the latency. And then if you look at the cost, you've got CPUs in the mix, uh, system on a chips, RNICs, switches, memory, and this doesn't scale well to match this increased SSD performance. So along comes NVMe OF Ethernet SSDs. 
with the NVMe OF termination on the drive itself, the controller functionality is now distributed across all the drives. The scaling point then becomes a single drive in an inexpensive controller. <clears throat> it enables this idea of eBOFs, which is an Ethernet attached bunch of flash. Uh, so power cooling, SSDs, and an Ethernet switch. That's pretty simple. I don't think it'd make it any simpler. But doesn't this make each drive more expensive? Maybe initially, but now customer buys the controller incrementally as needed for new capacity. So efficiencies of scale are now applied to this controller functionality in the manufacture of these drives, lower cost per bandwidth and lower cost per IOPS. The scaling unit, as you can see over on the right, is a single drive. You buy a bunch of empty enclosures, and you add a drive at a time as your capacity needs. But keep in mind, as it goes, the cost of the storage is going down, so the last drive you add to that enclosure may be a lot cheaper than the first drive you add to that enclosure. So <clears throat> there is some complexity we want to talk about here in the existing controller device. The SSD transport is increasing faster than the network bandwidth, such as PCIe even. SSD throughput will triple because every time you double the number of bits in a cell, you're doubling the speed at which you can pull the data out of that, that uh, media. Uh, at network speeds double every few years. Now that's accelerating uh, due to the hyperscalers making the next generation of ethernet commodity a lot faster. So whenever you're taking an SSD and using a CPU, NIC, DRAM software, PCIe, there's a lot of cost here, but also it becomes a bottleneck because of the processing power of the CPU, of the NIC staying on the last generation of ethernet, etc. But an uh, Ethernet JBOF can actually just have an Ethernet switch in there. Simple and scalable performance from that Ethernet switch uh, will accommodate the SSDs. So there's different eSSD designs today. Some will support multiple interfaces and protocols. Others are just simple Rocky or TCP uh, drive. Uh, you can put a, a sort of interposer or bridge in front of a standard PCIe drive, or you can start to pull in that bridge onto the same board or eventually integrate it with your system on a controller. Now, what you want is not to plug in RJ45s to these drives, but rather have them plug into your standard 8639 connector that's already on the mid planes of a lot of these boards. So the first case use case we'll talk about is why not put these Ethernet drives behind the controller in existing systems. This allows them to scale a lot sh further than the PCI switch would allow them to do. So perhaps what might only scale to a trailer or two, uh, a tray or two with PCIe can now go maybe to the whole rack. So this using eSSDs allows higher scaling, uh, he'll, still hiding the individual SSD management from users, still a system, a storage system with perhaps data services running on it as well. The, the data services add value to those ethernet drives but the connection and orchestration is still done by that controller. So then you can do robust data protection schemes and distributed controllers, et cetera. Now, the second use case is just the completely disaggregated SSD storage with no controllers anywhere. Uh, 
instead of converting from the network into PCIe, why not have these native eBOFs devices and they're able to respond to hosts directly. And what's needed for this is management. In order to do this, you have to go in and manage each NVMe OF SSD separately. You wanna set them up with namespaces. You went, want to set them up with a host to namespace mapping so that the host only sees the, the namespaces it's allowed to. And then the host can discover through standard NVMe means those in namespaces and start using them, start mounting them, etc. So what SNEA has done is it's created a native NVMe OF drive specification. Version 1.0 is out now, and it allows you to discover and configure the drives, their interfaces, the speeds, and the management capabilities. We actually went and defined the connectors for this. So some connectors may need to configure the PHY signals based on the type of drive interface. Survivability and mutual detection is important. We've defined the pinouts for these common connectors, not just 8639, but also F SFF1002 form factor devices. We are going to continue to integrate with NVMe OF. There's a lot of work happening on discovery, uh, new commands being added to the admin controllers. And the management, though, is instead of in band over NVMe OF, or in addition to in band NVMe OF admin commands, this enables the management to go through Ethernet TCP in band of the ethernet interface, but out of band of the NVMe OF protocol. And this allows all the drives in a data center wide management to be directly contacted by the orchestration software that for example, creates pools of drives. Maybe initially the drives when they come in the back of the building enter a spare pool then they get configured with namespaces. Then they get put in a, a, a pool for the types of drives they are. They're also allowed to now be configured to deploy their namespaces in a host mapping situation uh, to specific hosts on demand as needed and also return to that pool when they're no longer needed. So the management has been the, the work that we're doing right now. We want to be able to scale out the orchestration of tens of thousands of drives. And we make this possible by using a RESTful API, such as DMTF Redfish. Redfish and SNEA's Swordfish follow a principle that each element report its own management interface information. So instead of the controller reporting the management interface, information. Now the drive provides that information directly. They can follow links in the higher level management application directly to the drive's management endpoint. Everything is HTTP, TCP, Ethernet based. All the uh, abilities to secure those interfaces are still enabled. And uh, what will make this interoperable over time is what's called an uh, interoperability profile. So we will be producing an interoperability profile that sort of sets a minimum bar for how much of this management interface you should, every drive should implement. Hopefully we'll have some ability to check that and get certified for that. So what do we have? We have a mock-up to start, I'll show a little bit of that. Um, we're gonna continue to push new models through Swordfish contributions to Redfish. And then we're gonna publish this interoperability profile at the DMTF for everybody to use. So we've been mapping the profile, the Redfish elements to NVMe and NVMe MI properties and actions. And there's more detail on this at other STC talks, so seek those out. 
But what we have is sort of a three-way effort. It's hosted by the SNEA SSM TWID, which is developing swordfish and special task force. And we've got chartered work from redfish, swordfish, and NVME discussions we had last year. So we really are investigating how will NVME and NVMEOF be managed in large scale environments. And this is where this work is, is uh, targeting. We also wanna come up with a common way that all organizations agree with to represent NVME and NVMEOF in redfish and swordfish. Redfish did have some NVME drive properties added, but not really a comprehensive view. We want to provide a clear map for NVME folks that don't know redfish or swordfish. So something coming from NVME will better understand the redfish swordfish environment and provide commonality where possible between the models and the solutions. So we use the available low level transports to get the device transport specific information into the common models. We use commands that are provided in the NVMe or NVMe ORF or NVMe MI specs. NVMe MI can be used as a low level to get the information into the high level management environment as out of band access mechanism when appropriate. So our scope, the NVMe subsystem, the NVMe OF, and the NVMe domain models. So the overall NVMe subsystem model reflects a unified view of all NVMe device types. Devices will instantiate an appropriate subset of the model depending on what the device does. The model diagrams do, no, do not reflect all available schema elements uh, that, that happens at the same time, but it does leverage and coarsely maps to existing redfish and swordfish storage models. So here are the NVMe objects that we map to redfish and swordfish so far. We have a map for the NVMe subsystem. NVMe subsystem includes one or more controllers, zero or more namespaces, and one or more parts. And the NVMe controller is used for IO, admin, and discovery. This is the thing that actually processes the NVMe commands. So the admin controller is a controller that exposes capabilities that allow a host to manage an NVMe subsystem. We've modeled all these admin aspects of an NVMe controller uh, into redfish and swordfish. Discovery in the NVMe sense is controller that uh, exposes capabilities that allow hosts to retrieve a discovery log page. Now you may discover an ESSD in a, your discovery log page, then go contact it in band using admin commands, go fetch the redfish URL to manage it out of band and manage it out of band from that point on. The IO is a controller that implements IO queues and intended to be used to access non-volatile memory storage medium. Namespace is essentially a volume in, in Redfish. So it's a quantity of non-volatile memory. The endurance group is a portion of NVMe who is endurance is managed as a group by the drive side, by the, by the controller side. MVM set is a way to logically partition the media such that it can achieve predictable latency and other benefits. And the NVM, NVM domain is the smallest indivisible unit that shares state, such as capacity or power. <coughs> So this is a model. On the left, we have the redfish swordfish model, which uses existing or newly defined redfish concepts. On the right is the NVMe model, and it uses those concepts I just described that are coming from the NVMe specs. So we've defined several different ways to do the device model. 
A simple SSD could be used for a PCI attached drive, for example. Uh, this could be retrieved from the drive by the BMC and it may perhaps using NVMe MI, but then the BMC may present this information uh, in the model that we're defining right now. In a JBOF, you have a PCIe front end uh, attached to a set of drives. And then EBOFs are what we're really concentrating is the Ethernet switch front end uh, to a set of drives. We're also dealing with a fabric attached array where we have a simple RAID front end, a simple controller attached to a set of drives. It's able to create export namespaces attaching to specific hosts. There's other things we'll get to eventually, but these two highlighted ones are what we have for markups today. So a simple SSD implementation would basically have one endurance group by default and one NVM set by default and perhaps even one NVMe namespace by default. There is some physical element representation info up above, such as a drive, a chassis, temperature elements, etc. We have a simple L NVMe drive sort of um, bubble diagram, we call this, which gives names to some of the elements that we're implementing. We really want a chassis element so you can locate the drive within the overall tray, overall rack. Uh, power and thermal is something that the BNC wants to get a hold of, but also the host wants to know about. Drives, volumes, storage controllers, systems and storage are the other elements we've chosen. So who is developing Redfish and Swordfish? These are the companies that are participating in each group and some of the companies participate in both groups. And we expect this momentum behind this effort to continue on and <clears throat> develop quite a bit of management interfaces over the next couple of years. So join us uh, in SNEA, join us in DMTF, join us in NVMe, and uh, let's get this work done. Thank you very much.